I'm Joe coming to you live from Mountain Dow from Solana Dev Relations. And I'm here with a couple folks from Mountain Dow. Go ahead and introduce yourself, guys. Hey, all. Uh, I'm Nick. How are you? How's it going? My name is Elias Marino. Um, I also work at Kronos. Hey, everyone. I'm Grant. I'm a DevRel intern at Solana this summer. Hey, I'm TJ. I'm building Mountain Pay. Nice, and we have been messing around with Seahorse, which just dropped. It's a Python framework for Anchor development to build Solana programs in Python. So we all kind of messed around with it for a little bit. We've been working on it at Mountain Dow, and um, we just wanted to kind of talk about it, share our thoughts, and um, show a little bit of a demo, I guess. So I guess we'll go around the room. What did you guys think of building on Seahorse? First impressions. Uh, yeah, it's super easy uh, to get up and running. Uh, basically, just ran a single command to download the Seahorse CLI and was off to the races. Kind of copy pasted the calculator app in, and um, everything worked. Uh, yeah, yeah, what worked easy. Um, like Nick said, it's super easy to get started, even if you know just basic Python. Um, if you understand, you know, simple Solana concepts, you're able to get running pretty fast. It only took me a couple of minutes to get the whole um, dev environment up. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I think something for me that was unique is that it just abstracted away a lot of the Rust uh, concepts that I like didn't really understand. Because like, I don't know, I started with my Rust exposure was with the Build Space project, and they kind of glossed over a lot of these terms um, that were a little confusing. So I think with this, it's like I kind of I understood like every line, which was like oh a lot more comforting and i think it's it was a good place for me to start i definitely want to like keep going keep building stuff on it yeah 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 i resonate with a lot of that i um i also don't have like a lot of familiarity with rust i haven't worked with it too much there's a, like a few times i've tried to stand up solana smart contracts and have definitely had like difficulties with it uh like errors from either anchor or rust um cpis all that kind of stuff. And I worked with it for a few hours today and I had a lot easier of a time. Um, but that was really awesome. And I think I'll also be able to use the Rust that it outputted to like learn more Rust. Um, I think that'll be cool to do like later. Oh yeah, definitely. Maybe you want to show that? You got a little demo going? You want to maybe show that on screen? Yeah, for sure. I won't really go over too many like seahorse details but this is just like a python smart contract um you can do classes which replace like the different structs um your functions translate to like rust functions and then you just kind of build it and it converts over to like rust equivalents so here are all the like, different handlers that get outputted and then um it just kind of looked if you've ever worked with anchor before it looks exactly like a kind of the structure of an anchor project and uh it comes with the tests as well and so this is just like a token swapping like escrow contract um and you would do, you do that the same way you would do like testing if you're writing like the anchor program yourself yeah, so yeah you have to you, you have to write the test so, it does so, generate the idea for you to then be able to write the test in javascript yeah. Okay. Nice. So technically speaking, you could write your program in Python and then just drop your IDL in your front end. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Very really interesting. So this has huge implications for like onboarding people to Solana who maybe are a little bit intimidated by Rust or maybe haven't worked with, you know, a language like that before. So like, what do you guys kind of think? Like any kind of thoughts on that? Like, uh, especially you, Grant, who, you know, somebody who knows Python and maybe hasn't learned so much about Rust. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like there's some really big implications there. And, and, you know, I think we can kind of use this to get people in, in an early stage in their development career. What do you guys kind of think of that? I'll start with you, Grant. Yeah, totally. I mean, I, I thought it was a lot easier to understand than even some of the starter Rust tutorials. Like, I feel like, um, yeah, like, like kind of like what I mentioned earlier, every, every single line, you know what it's doing. And, um, I think there's that higher level way of thinking is like a good way to approach it 
as a beginner and it's less intimidating. And I think like, just like that, how you feel about it is a big factor that determines like how, how much you want to continue. So I think I would definitely be more uh, interested in using Seahorse and, and building rather than like dealing with all of the nuances and uh, lower level decision making that, that, uh, you know, happens with rest. Um, so yeah, I, I would say it's definitely an improved beginner experience. Awesome. Yeah. And Grant or TJ, like you guys both said, you you struggle a little bit with Rust. Would you also consider using this as like a tool to look at the Rust it creates then and, and try to learn that way? It's something you would do. Yeah. No, totally. I mean, even with like CPIs and stuff like that. I think it was like two or three weeks ago. I was trying to do CPIs for like with like a, another friend, and I would call him like people who like knew what they were doing more than us and we could not get uh like accounts creating through cpis um and here i did it like almost immediately and that's like i think the cool part is like it it like kind of wraps up stuff and someone like, knows what they're doing on the back end um lets you move forward and then like yeah you can go back afterwards and recreate the harder parts yeah kind of picking backing off that uh, yeah definitely lowers a barrier for developers that are wanting to get uh, into Solana, into the ecosystem, and understanding what, what really is going on with these smart contracts. Um, one thing I'm curious about is, you know, what will developers do as far as seeing this as a stepping stone for Rust or something that they'll use exclusively to write smart contracts? Um, I definitely think there's room for both, 100%. Um, and I definitely think we will have both. Um, you know, just another avenue for accessibility for developing in this ever-growing ecosystem. I could totally imagine like that. Uh, you, you start building out your smart contract and then you want to do something a little more complicated and you hit a, a roadblock because you want to like import something that Aplex has done and you can't like deserialize it. Um, I mean, it just came out like yesterday, so we, we could be forgetting on, on that end. Right, right. But yeah. I could see it though. That'd be awesome. And there's a lot of legs that it could grow already. You know, like there's a lot of places it could go. Obviously, the better um, support that the creator Amelia gets from the community, um, the, the further this thing could go. So anybody who's watching this, if you're interested, if you want to contribute, the link's going to be in the description. Go ahead and jump on and um, just contribute to this project because we really think it would be really super important to Solana, to a lot of developers, pretty much anybody in Web3. Thank you guys.